Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy MXL Guapo, man. Street certified news. And we back with another one. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, first off, man. You know what I mean? As you see, man, we've been kind of, you know, building up the space, man. Um, You know, I, I just recently moved. So that's why, you know, now I got like a whole room that I'm going to dedicate to, you know, the docs and, and our videos that we make. It's funny because... Um, you know, at the last spot, man, I actually was shot all of that stuff in my kitchen. Um, I like the sound of my kitchen. It had like big ceilings and it had a nice sound to it. So I actually shot all of the older stuff in my kitchen. So this was actually on my kitchen wall right here. Um, this is right here, the tree of life. You see, it's an elephant tree of life, man. Um, you know, elephants are very, you know, wise animals, man. You know, they live a long time. They pass on a lot of their wisdom to the next generation. Um, and then, you know, man, the tree of life, man, you know, that just represent, you know, exactly what that is. But yeah, man, we just gonna keep building it up. Like I said, I might end up getting like a desk or a table, something like that. I don't know. We not all the way done yet. So we just gonna rock this video out like this. But I also want to shout out, man. Um, it's been like a lot of people like running into me in the street. Um, I'm walking down the street just doing my thing, motherfucker. Yo, street certified. Man, look, I, I I'm greatly humbled by that. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate that, man. Um Hey, if you see me in the street, shit, hey, come up, say what's up, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no celebrity or nothing. I'm not nobody. So it's like, yeah, if you see me in the street, holla at me. Man, I be telling y'all I be outside. And man, shout out to the three, four people I, I bumped into this week, man. That just happened to, you know what I'm saying? Know me like that, man. That was, it was a pretty humbling experience, man. It's not nothing that I'll be like looking for. I'm not really used to that shit. So that shit was kind of, you know what I'm saying? It was dope, man. That people showed me love, told me they like what we was doing over here. Bro, like I gotta keep shouting y'all out, man. Um, last week we dropped a video. Um, I think I asked for like 300 likes or something, man. Y'all ran it up to like eight, nine hundred likes, man. Um, something that you know it don't. It's not. It doesn't happen to every video. You know what I mean? So that's why when I ask for 300 likes, you know, I think I'm doing something like, man, y'all run it up, give me 300 likes. Well, y'all just run it up to then a thousand likes, man. So you know, I think for this video, man, let's stop. Man, smack that like button. Let's do like 350. You see what I'm saying? Like, we ain't gonna jump too high. You know what I'm saying? Cause like we, like I said, we humble. We appreciate them 300 likes that we asked for. And y'all rocked with us. So shit, man. Let's just bump it up a little bit, man. 350. You know what I'm saying? For this video. Um, this week, man, we getting into the boy Tay 600, man. He's had a, a kind of a busy week. Man, he got bloggers dropping diss tracks on him. More paperwork is dropping. People are bringing back up that uh, old 2020 FOIA paperwork. Um, and, man, we reached out to the bro. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll let you know what he said to us. You know what I'm saying? Later on in the episode, man. So, hey, let's get right into it, man. The boy Tay 600, man. Why everybody hates Tay 600, man. Let's go. On January 17th, 2012. Underground Chicago rapper Chief Keef uploaded his breakout street hit 300. Within a year of this video, the Chicago team will become the biggest rapper in the world. The speed at which Chief Keef blew up was so impressive that the energy catapulted a whole city into instant stardom, most notably those close to the rapper. And within months of Keith's second and even more massive hit, I Don't Like, two other teams from Chicago were also signed to major record deals, Lil Reese and Lil Dirk. Lil Dirk and his team OTF 600 in 2012 to 2013 was arguably the hottest music coming from Chicago outside of Keith himself. And fans even speak on early Team 600 having the most potential rap stars with artists like L.A. Capone, Ide, and Rondo No. 9. Somewhere behind all of that stood Tay 600. Tay 600, born Jermonte Carpenter, was a background face in many early Team 600 videos. And when rising star L.A. Capone was tragically shot and killed, Jermonte would be devastated, changing his name to forever pay homage to his fallen friend. Within only six months of the loss of LA, Team 600 will forever be changed. On February 22nd, 2014, only five months and four days since the death of LA Capone, Team 600 members would get caught up in a murder of a cab driver after a party they attended was shot up 
and they return to retaliate. Back in May um, of this year, man, we dropped the video. Y'all need to go check that out. You know, it kind of goes with this video, but it was on the boy Tay 600. Why everybody think Tay 600 a snitch? Um, in that video, we laid out the events uh, as documented as documented by Chicago Police Department. Um, we also uh, dug into that 2020 FOIA report. Um, there was like over 70 pages um, with page 38 being like one of the most important pages that people said, you know, pointed to Tay 600. When we dropped that video, uh, the boy Tay 600, man, you know, he responded to that. Um, he told us he liked he liked how we did our one too, but um, he did disagree with you know some of the things that we put in the video. Um, we don't really want to dig too deep into the whole thing and like go back and make that video like the same as this one. So it's like um, we just gonna play y'all a clip. Man, today, man, I just wanted to chill with y'all, man, vibe with y'all. We doing one on the boy Tay Six Hundred. You know what I mean, gangster slash rapper turn blogger. A lot of people think he a rat. We went and did some research, man, and that's what we found out. So yeah, so after we dropped that video, um, Tay jumped in our comments, man. He was one, actually one of the first people to make a comment on the video, which was crazy because it may have only had like a couple hundred views. That's where he let us know, hey man, like your one two, like how you do your stuff, but we I disagree. Um, at that time, I reached out to Tay. I let him know, hey man, let's do an interview. Let's sit down. Let's go over all the documents, man, and let's figure out, you know, where our views differ. We never got a response from Tay, uh, which at the time we didn't really think much of. But you know, as we go down the story later, man, that was kind of, you know, foreshadowing, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff with Tay, man. You know, that was our first time dealing with Tay, and it really didn't come off right. I didn't like how he made the comment, but refused to, you know, respond to me like trying to fix the situation i ain't really like that soon after team 600 members rondo and c they were arrested word began spreading about who didn't get arrested and why this was the first time people would question if tay had cooperated to avoid that murder charge simultaneously tay 600 as a rap artist had began gaining some momentum and for the next three years, Tay would occasionally drop music in between the jail stint. And although his buzz was at an all time high, his affiliation with 600 and others seemed at its weakest. In 2017, Team 600 founder E Day came out publicly for the first time against Tay 600. Some say angered by the decades long convictions of C Day and Rondo followed by a short jail sentence or the gun charge by tay in 2016 ide would go on to promise paperwork evidence of tay 600 being a snitch during an interview with chicago blogger truth teller tv although ide would not produce the promised paperwork his public statements on tay would cause drill fans to be eternally intrigued by the possibilities it was around this time, uh, 2019, Tay 600 began uh, going on interviews. I believe he did Vlad. He did a number of other interviews where he seemingly addressed, you know, the hate he was receiving for these snitch allegations. Um, at that time, he claimed that, you know, they were million dollar deals that he wasn't able to sign because people still had questions about these snitch allegations. And all of that really culminated into 2020 when the FOIA report uh, was released. Um, word for a lot of street dudes, man. Um, when you take things to trial, paperwork may not come out like during the trial. But one thing uh, about when you take it to trial, if you lose, you're able to appeal your conviction. And through the appeals process, everything becomes public. They, they look at every aspect of the original trial. So documents that may have been under sealed in the original trial will become public during the appeal. And through that, through C Day and Rondo's appeal, even though they did uh, lose the appeal, a number of documents became public notice. Um, that is why the 2020 FOIA report was so important because C Day and Rondo had just lost their appeal. All of these documents are now no longer sealed 
and when uh, internet detective or some person went online and they filed the report the FOIA request and they were granted you know about 60 pages of documents you know page 38 which is the page that a lot of people uh say it it, it shows where Tay cooperated uh with the police um shout out my boy 16 man i don't know what happened with the video with him and c day but you know we were able to uh, upload the full interview that c day gave when um you know when he lost his appeal back in 2020 you know we titled it that hey man he came at the whole 600 which we thought he did including rondo he really came at everybody he shouted out Mimo, he shouted out dirk and vaughn and a few other people but the the real team 600 members and and, and, I, and when he said team 600 llc i'm thinking of the original members he didn't really shout none of them dudes out uh including tay so we put that in uh you know in the title again tay is in our comments he's going back and forth with people um and last time he did that in our video he didn't respond so this time uh we didn't want to just hit him up privately so uh shout out to my boy truth teller man um just last week uh we went on truth teller you know sometimes i sit down with bro i just talk about the culture man we talk about things that somebody i know in a long time um and he happened to ask me about tay 600 tay 600 Okay. Okay. And I hit you like, bro, this was done good. I'm actually going to sit down with Tay, man. Okay. Because, like, bro really got an opinion about this shit. And it's like, what I'm seeing, I don't understand how you could talk your way out there. All right. So, it's like, I really want to sit down with bro and literally go over each piece of paper I got, each statement, every... I want to sit down with bro and do that. Thinking about the fact that, hey, man, you know, I'm making these videos... And he's going in my comments, basically telling the fans or telling my followers like, hey, this shit ain't true. But he won't actually sit down with me and talk and we can literally go over the FOIA documents. He won't do that. So uh, I took it upon myself uh, to call bro out uh, on Truth Teller platform. Uh, like I said, it wasn't nothing that was planned or nothing like that. It was just Truth Teller asked me about it. Um, Tay was in the news last week So Truth Teller probably just hollered at me Asked me about it And it just so happened that all this shit had been going on Where I'm trying to get the interview And bro ducking me But at the same time, you know, he he in my comments After the interview, man, you know what I'm saying I didn't want to kind of come off as on some like subliminal shit So after I did the Truth Teller interview I posted it, I tagged him I also hit him in his DM And of course, you know, this time I heard back um, I don't know if it was Truth Teller. I don't know if because thousands of people heard it. I don't know if people have been hitting him up. Hey, man, this dude said he want to sit down with you. I don't know what's going on. But for some reason, he hit me up. You know what I'm saying? After we did the Truth Teller interview. You know, surprisingly, man, we, we had a little decent professional back and forth. And, man, we set up a time and a day for the interview, like, surprisingly. So, like I said earlier in the video, I was going to tell y'all, you know, what bro said about all of these allegations, man. So, hey, let's just go straight to the interview. Yeah, man, it wasn't no fucking interview, man. The dude ducked me. He never, I never heard back from fucking Tay ever again, man. We set up a time. We set up a date. He said, oh, man, just got to holler at my manager. Everything will be cool. Never heard from fucking Tay again, man. So, like I said, man, at this point, man, I'm starting to fucking hate this nigga Tay 600, man. I'm guessing this why everybody else hates Tay 600, man. Dude be ducking his taco. He be lying. He love making comments and talking to the fucking fans, but he don't want to address none of this shit with no real niggas, man. So, at this point, man, we just going to drop the video like this. Man, this is why everybody hates Tay 600, man. Buddy ass be lying all the time. Bro, it wasn't the fact that I didn't agree with it. It's just that when I read it and you said that it was about me, it wasn't about me. That shit wasn't about me, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That shit wasn't about me. That's all. I, I, I'm not, I didn't, I ain't not agree with you with the post. You talking about the shit when you posted and saying, see they, he, you said he made a um video talking about me, Breezy, and Mimo. That's what, that's when I seen that, I'm like, shit, that ain't about us. Because I was on the phone with 16 that day. You know what I'm saying? I was on the phone with C Day that day. Actually, I was with 16 and C Day called me. That clip, it came from 16, shit, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, nah. I'm really giving you some insight on the shit, bro. I wasn't trying to 
tweak with you. I never even watched the whole thing. I just know that that was. Hey, it's your boy MXO Couple, man. Street certified news, man. We not going you know, make this video no longer, man. I don't. I, hey, I appreciate everybody for rocking with me, man. I appreciate you. I'm extremely humble, man, by the amount of support we've been getting on the channel, man. Man, just man, smack that subscribe button if you haven't already. Keep running the channel up, man. We gonna keep giving y'all real videos, real stuff. I'm not just gonna jump on here and say some shit because I ain't got nothing to say just to drop a video. I know people were saying that shit. No, we take our time with all these videos. Um, man. Street Certified News, man. The most reputable source for urban media. Man, rock with us on our journey, man. We're going to start building this room up. May put a big-ass fucking table in here. Start doing podcasts, man. Who fucking knows? Either way, man, it's your boy MXL Grapple, man. Street Certified News, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Smack that subscribe, man. Smack that like, man. Love y'all, bro. We out.